Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part four of my jQuery and video tutorial. Today, because you guys have sent me tons of emails asking me questions about how to add and remove elements and a lot of questions in regards to how different functions operate in jQuery, that's what I'm going to focus on today. The first thing I'm going to do is, as you can see on the right side of the screen, I created an H3 tag, a couple headers, paragraph, text box, and a bunch of buttons that are going to be hooked into functions. If you didn't watch the previous tutorials to this, definitely watch them. Otherwise, you may be confused. Also, a link to all of the code that I use here today is in the underbar, so you might want to get that before we continue, but either way, let's continue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bind these buttons we have on the right side of the screen to some functions so they actually can do something. And replace with HTML is the name of the first button on the right side of the screen. So I'm going to bind that button so that whenever it is clicked, it triggers a function with the same name to be fired. And right here, what I'm demonstrating is the difference between the HTML instead of the text function that's available for pasting information into elements on web pages. There you go. I just bound both of those guys. So now I got to create the functions for them. Replace with HTML. Don't need any properties. And the H3 tag ID number that's assigned to it is H3 tag. And here I'm going to use the HTML function to paste in an H6 tag. Close that off. Let's create another function. Except this is going to do exactly the same thing, except it's going to call the text function. Everything else is precisely the same. So we're going to file save that, jump over here. And if you click on replace with HTML, you're going to see that it did change it into an H6 tag and it did not print out these H6 tags. However, if you click on replace with text, you're going to see that the tags show up inside of there. So that's how those two functions completely differ from each other. So what I got to do now is come in here and create a couple more or bind a couple more buttons to actual functions. And I'm going to show you one way to add a paragraph. And in the next part of this tutorial, which is going to be a completely different program, but it's going to be contained in this one, I'm going to show you a bunch of different ways to add things into very specific locations on a web page. And when I say things, I mean elements. This is going to be called remove a para. All right, so we got that. So now we got to create these functions. No problem. Let's just come down here and copy this, save ourselves some time. Scroll this up, change this to add a para. And the name of this paragraph right here is rand para. So we're going to make those changes. And whenever we remove, I'm going to set this up so that I remove the last paragraph. And I'm doing some of these things just to be different. One of the ways, anyway, to add this paragraph is using the append function. And here I'm going to append a paragraph, which is kind of bad form, but either way. And whenever I want to delete this paragraph, I just call remove and then call this remove a Para. And this does accept, the remove function does accept properties, but I'm just going to leave it this way. And if I file save that, jump over here, you can click see, add text. As I do that, I add paragraphs. And then if I click on remove text, I remove paragraphs. So now we're going to bind a couple more functions to buttons. And I'm going to show you how to switch these guys, mainly because I received this as a request in regards to how you'd be able to switch elements around on a web page. You guys do ask me some funny questions sometimes. And since I figure you got this now, I'm just going to bind all the rest of the buttons to the functions that I need to create below. I'm going to show you one way to add an element before another element, how to add an element after another element. Make sure you keep all of your capitalization the same. And then how to change the value in a text box in a form. Okay, so now i got to create all these functions. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. So I have to remove a para. I'm going to have to switch the last with the first. And one way is actually to just keep it this way. I originally wasn't going to do it this way, but what the heck, it works. I'm going to show you here in a second a little bit more interesting way of doing this. And here I'm just referencing the first position here. And that's all I need to do is switch the last with the first. Add an element before another element. Here we're going to switch this to first. And I'm doing some of these things just to show you how to use these different tools. In the second part of this tutorial, I'm going to go into some more intricacies of what exactly is going on. And here is how you would use the after function. Let's change this to last since I already did it this way before. Let's just change this to after. All right. And then the last function I'm going to show you is how to change the value of a text box. I showed you how to change the value of a button in the last tutorial. And the name or the ID for this text box is rand text. So all you got to do is put dot and then followed by VAL and then random text. If we file save that, you can see all these guys work. All right, we saw this one already before. Add text, we saw that before. Last to first, you can see that that switched. This previously was the first, now it's the last. Add before, I go before anything. 
jumped in there, add after, I go after everything, and then to change the value in this text box, just do that. So there's a whole bunch of different ways to put different values and move elements around on a web page. And now I'm going to show you a little bit more intricate way of doing this and then explain exactly some of the complexity involved in placing elements using jQuery. Okay, on the right side of your screen, basically, we have an H3 tag and we have a paragraph tag. But for the most part, we're going to focus 100% on this paragraph tag. I'm going to explain how the different functions work, specifically how before insert, before prepend to, append to, append, insert after, and after work. And then I'm also going to show you a way to delete very specific text using the remove function. Now I'm going to show you, I'm just going to type all these out. Before actually places the element before the paragraph tag itself. And as you're going to see, before is going to be further out from the paragraph tag than any of the other ones. And here, I'm going to put a span. And I'm going to say before paragraph, so that you'll be able to see on the right side of the screen exactly what's going on. Now I'm going to show you insert before. Insert before places the new element as a sibling of whatever you tell it to work with. So here we're going to tell the RAND paragraph that we want this new span to be a sibling of it, which means it's going to be on the same level. Close off that span, insert, before, here we're just going to say insert that text or that span that we just created before RAND para, which is the ID for the paragraph, and it shall do it. Now append to actually places the new element as a child of the paragraph, and just keep my life short here, let's just go like this. And here we're going to use prepend to, and prepend is just kind of like before, sort of. And here we're going to say prepend to paragraph, so that you'll be able to see exactly where that shows up. Copy this. Append to works very similar to prepend in that it's going to place the new element again as a child. It's just going to come after the paragraph. So it's going to be a child of this paragraph right here, but it's going to come after the text. And here we're going to copy this guy. And then you have append, and this is going to place the new element as the last child of the paragraph element. So here we're going to say append paragraph. And then the last two ways of doing this, I'm going to use insert after, insert after. And insert after places the new element as a sibling of the paragraph, just after it. And then the last one I'm going to demonstrate here is how the after function works. So type in after and put in after paragraph. And this just places the new element after the closing paragraph tag. And if we file save that, you can see this here. And now you can see where everything shows up. So before, this is the before function. It shows up before the opening paragraph tag. So that's why it's leftmost or outermost. Then you have insert before, which places the new element as a sibling to the paragraph. That's the reason why it's outside of prepend to which creates a child. It actually places it inside of the paragraph tag itself. And then you can see likewise that append to also creates a child element. You can see insert after creates siblings and after, which is right here, throws my new span after the closing paragraph tag. So that is how all three of those different things work, or actually how all, what is this, eight, six, seven of these different things work. So. Try to wrap your head around it, and after you get more used to the DOM, if you're not really used to it now, you'll better understand exactly the differences between siblings and children and other types of elements and how they work on a web page. And then as the final thing, I'm going to show you how to delete very specific information on a web page. And I'm just going to come down here. I'm going to type in form. Just give it a junk action because I'm just creating a button that's going to do nothing except call a jQuery function. And I'm going to give it the ID, delete span, close that off, give it a name, delete span, and then close that off. Like that, and then close off the form. So I just create a button, that's all I did. And then I'm going to jump up here and bind that button to a function. Span, bind, so that when that button's clicked, it's going to call delete span. So what do I got to do? I got to create the delete span function. And I'm going to jump down here, scroll that up. And here I'm going to say delete any span item or remove it. I guess I should use remove since that's the name of the function. If it contains the word append anywhere as a value. And you could change this and have it be based off of deleting something based off of inputs entered into a text box or whatever you want to do it. Okay, file save, reload it, and you can see right here it says append and there it says append. And when I click this button that is going to delete right now. See?
So there is numerous different ways to add elements, delete elements, move elements, and so forth and so on with jQuery. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, till next time, I'm going to cover jQuery animations. Till next time.